Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, this is going to be a short video on an easy to do mod on this amp that this is, I feel, a must do. I think this is the one kind of fatal flaw that I saw inside this amp and that's that they put 5 watt resistors on the cathodes of these KT88s. And there should be nothing larger than a 1 watt resistor there. And the reason for that is something catastrophic happens, bias gets set way wrong, one of the tubes just fails, has nuclear thermal runaway, and just totally does a China syndrome meltdown, it'll pop that resistor. And it'll act like a fuse, and it'll save these output transformers that you can't replace. And I don't know why in the world they would put a 5-watt resistor there, other than someone just thinking, hey, this is a big tube, so it needs a big resistor. And they never sat down and did the Ohm's Law to see that this thing doesn't need a big resistor. Even a half-watt one would probably work even better. I went with 1-watt one ones just... Because it'll still pop that 1 watt one if something happens. But that 5 watt ones, it'll transmit up to 700 milliamps within its rating. Which would destroy this output transformer. And so, hopefully, with what we're doing today, voids that whole situation. So, let me show you how to do this simple mod. Okay, so the last thing we have to do is come in here and replace these... 5 watt 10 ohm resistors on the cathode with these little 1 watt ones. And you're probably thinking, what? You can't run all that power to this little tiny resistor. You need these big fat ones for those big KT88 tubes. Well, if you do the math with the Ohm's Law, this resistor can run up to 300 milliamps of current through it at 1 watt. And that's way beyond what we would ever want to see this tube run. It's actually more power than is supposed to run through the choke that we upgraded. This 5 watt resistor can handle up to 700 milliamps of power, which you would never want to see on the cathode of one of these tubes. So what we're trying to do here, and this is actually probably overkill, it would actually probably be better to put a half watt one here, but we're going to go with a 1 watt one and my assumption is that once this thing goes past 300 milliamps the tube's red plating it's shorting out and it's quickly going to blow this resistor which is going to save the output transformer plus these are 0.1 percent precision and that means that when we're setting the bias with the meter that all four of the tubes are going to be biased the same Whereas if you had a 5 or 10% resistor, like I think these are 5%, you're not going to get the accuracy and biasing. And these are easy to replace. Honestly, if you don't want to do this other stuff that we did to this amp, this is something that I would recommend doing to this amp if you do nothing else. You clip that one lead off. You come in here with a soldering iron. You heat this joint up right here. Pull that resistor out. You're going to bend the new one up like that. We heat this terminal up. Poke the resistor through the hole, and then come over here on this other end. And solder the resistor to this tag strip. Just like that. 
and now the cathodes are protected in case the bias goes crazy or something happens got a tube that goes bad and it shorts out the resistor will pop instead of taking out the rest of the inside of the amplifier so now the last thing we need to do is replace this capacitor on the power switch so yes this is really the last thing we're going to be doing we're going to be replacing this little film cap that's across the power switch and we're going to be installing a 0.01 UF XY safety cap and the easiest way to do this is first just cut the leads on the one that's in there we're going to put the sideways terminal part in first like that and then heat this slide up and put that side in just like that and then just like the one that was in here originally I'm gonna get something like a screwdriver behind it like this and just bend it over like that so it's up against the side of the switch and I have to go test it but normally that's all it takes to fix that pop when you turn the power switch off on one of these amplifiers is to put a high quality safety cap there so that's it let's wrap up this video here well, as you can see that's a pretty simple mod to do if you can solder even decently you can do this mod and again if you let the amp sit for you know just for safety's sake you know let it sit an hour before you pull the bottom cover off there's not going to be any dangerous voltages inside and you don't have to come back and check any voltages with the amp hot or anything like that you just need to you know cut pull out that one resistor solder in the new one it's four of those and that way if you ever have some kind of catastrophic failure with some of these tubes because a lot of times you might be you know cleaning the house or something like that not even be in the same room and not see one of the tubes red plate and just sparks flying and you know all that kind of mess you don't want to get to that point because by the time it blows the fuse on the power supply it's going to have melted these output transformers and then i don't know where well obviously you can't buy replacements for these i mean possibly the music share people could hook you up with a, a replacement one but you know i don't know if they can or not and this is such a simple thing to do that will protect this amplifier for years to come so you don't have issues with this because some of the other things that I've repaired like these bias switches honestly I have a feeling that if the owner had just like exercised these just going like that you know half a dozen times those switches would have self-cleaned and things would have started working and the bias pots on this amp do have safety resistors on each side of them so that if the bias pot fails there's still resistors there to keep the tubes from just going into china syndrome meltdown the caps are replaced they meet the rating i mean the amps running right at 450 volts on that cap and it's rated at 450. good practice is you overrate the caps a little bit so that's why i replaced those and this little bit of grounding work I did, that's not a huge deal either. So most of these mods weren't like must-do things, but I really feel like this one with these 10 ohm resistors is something that you should consider doing to your amp, even if everything's working great on it. And then, like I said, the other thing, replacing this power switch cap, that helped a little bit, but I feel like the main thing that we're hearing is there's a relay that's connected to this triode ultra linear switch and when you have it in triode mode you turn the amp off when that relay doesn't get power it's already doesn't have power so it's not switching and so you don't hear the click or the pop in the speakers well if you have it in ultra linear mode when you turn the power off 
the relay that's energized de-energizes, the points close, it goes from ultralinear to triode, which makes the click, and then the power's off. And you can hear that same click in the speakers when you switch from ultralinear to triode with the amp turned on. The other thing that I looked at, somebody asked about this, about using this preamp switch. Just don't do that. These amps have such a super high input sensitivity. You really are going to have to attenuate the signal with the volume control coming out of a preamp anyway. And again, it's, I think, what was it, 0.2 volts RMS will drive this thing to full power? And most CD decks and decks, I'll put 2 volts RMS. And then if you're running it through a preamp, even with Unity Gain, that's going to just blow the input of this amp through the roof. And you don't want to be doing that. So, again, just I wouldn't use this preamp switch. So anyway, last thing I need to do to this thing is I want to take this over to my friend's house. He's got an R8. He was out of town this last weekend. I thought I was going to do it this weekend, but he was out of town for, I guess, for Memorial Day. And I want to take it over and do an A, B, listen to with the R8, with the tubes that both the amps come with, and then with the upgraded tubes in the R8 and the upgraded tubes in this one. I am going to run both amps with these KT88-Z tubes, so the power tubes are the same and they're a match set, so we don't have that kind of playing into the deal because I think his R8 came with a better match set than this amp did, and I don't want to skew the results from that. And then I've got some fun 12AX7 and 7025 tubes to try for the voltage gain tube, and then I've got some 12A7s of several different flavors, some new production and some old production or old stock, and we can see what those do and come back and do like a review on, should you get this? Should you get the R8? Does the modified R8 sound better than the mods done to the X7? And given this one needs so much less work, if they sound the same, definitely get this one. Plus this has a phono stage, which I haven't listened to yet. So anyway, hope you're enjoying this content on this China amp and I know I've enjoyed working on this one, and I will say that it, to the viewer that says, why are you always trashing China products? Well, because most of them deserve it. This one doesn't. This is a really well-made product. And like I said, I think the problem that the owner had with these rotary switches was from it sitting up. And I don't know how exactly it was stored through its whole life. Had a little corrosion in one of the switches. Probably could have sprayed some deox and fixed it, but we went ahead while it was here and replaced the switches and put in some nicer bias pots just because. So anyway, I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, please subscribe. We're going to continue to do this fun content on tube gear. Thanks to you Patreon folks and also for folks that have made donations to my page. I really appreciate that. And until next time, have a nice day.